It's the Yankee and the Brit in the RTM Radio Network on the phone with us, Mr. Bill Weaver. Hi, Bill. How are you? Hey. Doing, doing great today, guys. How are y'all? Oh, having a blast over here. Doing what we do best, I reckon. I'm parked in Laramie, Wyoming, sitting here, uh, sitting here writing, a, writing on a song I've been working on for a while. Well, that should take up plenty of extra time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've worked on this one for about four months and haven't got the ending of it yet. So <laughs> trying to come up with ideas. So I was hoping maybe y'all would give me the end of it. Save me, save me some trouble. <laughs> yeah, oh. of course. We'd be glad to. You wouldn't like the end of the song that we'd make up. <laughs> no, I've, I've made up some dandies. I have made some dandies. I need to call Tony Justice up every time I'm on the phone with him. He's telling me a new song he wrote. So where I do need you go to him and see if he can finish it for me. Where do you get the ideas for your songs? And it, it, they just uh, just really come out of nowhere, Randy. Uh, just different experiences out here. I'll be in a truck stop and hear a driver say something, or maybe my wife will say something, or a friend will say something on the phone. And uh, it just sparks a little idea, and I've got a little voice recorder in here. I'll just push the button on it and record that idea, and then when I stop, I'll start writing. Ah, uh, so uh, we're, do I'm, we get any hints on what your current song is about that you're writing? I, I uh... I, I never really have any specific topic that I'm writing on. I got five notebooks just full of notes in here oh. of, uh, of just ideas. You were, you were some, tell- some partial partial songs. So once in a while, I'll grab two of them, blend them together, and get a song out of it. And that's that's when you know it's good. That sounds so, pretty good. You were telling yeah, me, yeah, it worked out, worked out good. You were telling me you pull hazmat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an interesting job. I did that for a little while, and after. After a certain amount of time, I decided I'd had enough of that. I went back to the old freight box again. Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, it's getting crazy enough with traffic out here and stuff. I'm I'm getting to the point where I'm getting kind of unnerved with it. So everybody's in such a hurry anymore, and uh, you know, people are passing and then cut you off ten feet off your bumper. It's uh, it's getting scary out here. I don't know if there's a good answer for it. Yeah, it almost. I just say, uh, slow down a little bit and stay away from everybody. That's the best thing I can do. Yeah, I was going to say, it almost make you think you aren't going to get anywhere anytime soon when you're having to wait on everybody else to get out of the way, you know, in order to do it safely. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. And what's bad, there's, uh, with these uh, speed-limited trucks, you know, there's so many companies that's got their trucks cut back now. Uh, it's just as bad with the trucks almost as just with cars anymore as far as holding you back. Uh, Are you- and a lot of it's not the driver's fault. Of course, it is their fault if they come in too early in front of you, but... But it's just a, it's a bad situation all the way around for us. It's just going to progressively get worse, though, because, you know, with the laws they're passing. Have you seen any bad accidents or had any experiences yourself carrying hazardous material? I've, I've, I've seen some horrible, horrible accidents out here over the years. And, uh, I've been out here, I've been in these trucks, you know, all my adult life off and on, and it's uh, seen a lot of, lot of bad stuff, and, uh, a, lot of, a lot of foolish mistakes by people by uh, car drivers and truck drivers alike. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nine out of ten times, you know, that's just something that could have been prevented. I mean, if people just slow down and uh, and use some common sense most of the time. Yeah, the sad thing is I have to agree with you. I don't think it's ever going to get any better. No, no, it's, uh, we're getting more traffic every day, and uh, I, I just, I don't know that there, that there is an answer to it. Now they're wanting to make these trucks, uh, they've got proposals up to allow the trucks to run more white, and, uh, you know, that's, that's just going to, progressively get worse and uh, it seems nobody wants to listen to the drivers about it the one, the one group of people that knows what the actual impact on the industry is nobody wants to hear us yeah it makes uh, me wonder don't care and, and the government don't care about it it makes me wonder you know uh one of the first thing that comes to mind when they talk about wanting to make trucks heavier is the infrastructure i mean you know most of the bridges in this country are so old are they going to be able to carry the weight and you know i'm sure they can carry the weight in the beginning but how long will it be before they're literally pulverized into pieces and you know end up like the 35 bridge up north that fell out from underneath of everybody i mean how much can the how much can they take of that extra weight and that heavy pounding all the time before they all start collapsing you're, you're exactly right. And I mean, you take a, a major bridge like that when it collapsed, or, or for instance, something like the Interstate 10 bridge down at Baton Rouge, Louisiana, it's always severely congested. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's loaded up with trucks all the time. I mean, you got three or four lanes of trucks 
out there and uh you know you got eleven thousand more pounds on each one of those trucks sitting there on that bridge all the time i'm, I'm not an engineer not purporting to be but uh it can't be good for the bridge well you know I mean, they're, it's, just, it's just common sense they're built to flex of course you know you know i know and a lot of other drivers know you can sit on those bridges and you can feel a lot of them bounce up and down and of course if they didn't flex they would crack but as old as some of those sections of bridge are across there you can't tell me they were designed you know how many years ago was that thing put in that that bridge was made to carry that kind of weight, you know, that we've been putting oh, on it that, lately. That Baton Rouge Bridge, I think it was built in the 40s or 50s. Uh, and, you know, I have no doubt it's a well-designed bridge. It's held up for a lot of years. But they, they weren't anticipating the traffic flow uh, that we've got in America now. And the, and the Interstate 10 corridor down there, it's not like they can build a lot of roads for people to get around the Interstate 10 down in that area because they're surrounded by water everywhere they go. I mean, yeah. Exactly. It costs uh, trillions of dollars to, to go around all that. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. That kind of stuff really scares me. And just, you know, since I quit driving, even being in the four-wheelers, you know, you see a lot of things, people driving along, and uh, all of a sudden there's no bridge there because it collapsed. I mean, that's, you know, it's not just about truck drivers. It's about everybody. Yeah, and you've, you've been in these trucks before enough to know you, you can see both sides of it. Uh, and it, it's just a lot of this stuff is create. It's uh, we're setting ourselves up for a big fall. And uh, one thing all of us need to do out here, cars and trucks alike, is to focus on safety, safety, safety. And uh, and they're they're taking that away from us without realizing that they're, that they're taking it away from us. Well, if you want to get into that, which I hate to get into a Randy rant, but they're taking it away from us. Yes, but I would have to say it's mostly uh, because all of us are letting them get away with it. Exactly. Exactly. We just need to stand together and be strong about it. Yeah. Well, I. And, uh, you know, you know we, we went we through need to that be on the phone with these congressmen and senators, and uh, and raising all the hell we can about it because it it is a uh, it's it's something that impacts. You know, I've got a wife and kids and family that's on these roads every day. I don't want none of them hurt. Uh, no more than any of the public wants their family hard out here on these roads. We all just need to be safe. Well, when you do go home, it's nice to know you're going to be able to get home. Oh, exactly, exactly. And people are so oblivious on the roads today. You know, we uh, we see every single day people pulling out in front of our truck, and they they have no idea that we're even there. You know, it's or they're or they're too busy on the phone. You know, they're just and that's not just truck drivers. That's car drivers. Anybody, they're just completely oblivious, and they completely cut you off the road, if, you know, if you're not being careful yourself. Crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they'll do that. You know, they'll do that and cut you off, and then I'm in a tanker, in a in a barrel tank like I am behind you. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. And, you know, if I don't have a safe following distance, now you're the one that's in the immediate danger. You know, that person has put you and your family in immediate danger. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and it yeah. also ends up you being the one at fault if you do hit them because now your assured clear distance is gone because of their ignorance. Exactly. Somebody took away my safe following distance. Yeah, and that and, uh, that's the thing that you're taking. I, I don't I don't know if there's any answer to it, Randy. I wish you know, we'd be millionaires if we could come up with a good safe answer to it. But we probably wouldn't be because I don't think nobody would listen to us. Well, we could <laughs> we could <laughs> probably not. We could refix that. We could set the clock back about thirty years and start over. You you bet. Hey, that raise the raise the legal age to drive to about forty, and uh, and cut it off at about forty one, <laughs> and it uh, it limit how many of us were on the road. <laughs> of course, that'd put me out of it. I'd have to go home and stay with my wife, and uh, <laughs> boy, I don't know how that'd work out. She she might be trying to run me off pretty quick. Oh lord! <laughs> hey, Michelle wants you to say hello to her. Hello, Michelle. <laughs> She's like, say my name, Bill. <laughs> well, I just said it. She's over. I've got a, I've got a little uh, niece named Michelle, and she's having uh, she's having my great nephew's birthday party today. He's twelve. <laughs> well, she's Aww. over there in England, and she just gets a kick out of all these accents y'all bring to the show all the time. Yeah, I've got a. I've been told that I've got a little bit of a an accent. <laughs> well, just that? just a little. <laughs> I can't hear it myself, but everybody tells me that. Just a little bit. <laughs> I'm just sat here <laughs> listening and like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Donna tries to <laughs> yeah. Donna tries to tell me I have an accent, and I'm an old Yankee from Ohio, and basically we don't have accents for all intent and purpose, and uh, she just gets a kick out of it for some reason. I'm still not quite well, sure. Well, I'll what it tell is. you, listening to you talk, I wouldn't peg you as being from Ohio. You uh, you sound like you've got a little bit of Southern country in your in your voice. You've been around somebody in your life that's got a Southern accent, because I can hear a little bit of a drawl in there. Well, all my relatives are hillbillies, and I spent a lot of time in the South during the trucking years because that was my favorite place to be because I got out of the winter weather, so that might have had a little something to do with it. You bet. Yeah, Ohio gets their share of weather up there. Oh, good God. I couldn't wait to get out of there. This is the best thing I ever did was coming down here. 
I guess uh, I guess South Carolina got slammed yesterday from what some of my friends were telling me on the internet. Yeah, now they say that storm's so, going to head out to sea, so they might be they might might just miss the worst of it. I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, I hope. Well, I, I hate to, I hate to see that bad weather move in on people. So, what's your uh, schedule for things to do now? What's going on? Which way you headed? Do you got more shows to do, or are you, aren't you going to be on a show here this week? I think. Uh, uh yeah, uh, on the truck and roundup with uh, with Kevin Young uh, Thursday. I want to be on there. Uh, I've got actually a few few little things like that li- lined up. No uh, no live music shows right now though. I'm uh, I'm so tied down with work and uh, trying to get this CD finished. It's just a uh, run, run, run constant. So tell us about uh, Joplin. Do I apologize for a bit of a delay? I think there is, yes. Um, we can't like we. There's quite a bit of a delay when we speak to anybody on the phone, and we're just uh, kind of half getting used to each other. And I always end up talking at exactly the same time as. The other person talks. <laughs> Me and Randy do it all the time, that, just in day to day life. It's all it's all good. <laughs> I do the same thing, so we'll just we'll just learn to live with it. Everybody out there listening can learn to live with it. That's like, yes. every, anybody's talking on a cell phone understands it. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we these guys in the chat room. They are saying that uh, Randy, they think you have an accent. That you have a southern accent as well. It's not just Bill that thinks that you have an accent. Oh, I, see there. I yeah, I've, I've got people who've got my back out there. These other drivers have my back. <laughs> yes, they do. I still think I'm just an old Ohio boy, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dave says it's okay, Bill. Nobody understands her British ass. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's what I've got. I've got a British accent. That's what I've got. You have. <laughs> you must be from I've South way, Wales. <laughs> yeah, yeah, way, way, way west, west British, that's way <laughs> west British. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> hey, someone today said to come up to our truck and started talking to Randy. He, he talked to Randy for about five minutes, and then he looked at the side of the car, saw the Yankee and the Brit side on the side of the truck, and he said, so who's the Yankee? <laughs> and who's the Brit? Oh, you kidding. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's he that did. bad. <laughs> he, he looked not, like he was about three not, sheets not in the Not much of a history buff. <laughs> he, not much of anything. You should have seen him. <laughs> I know he's, he says, are you a mechanic? Do you, do you fix cars? And then he said, oh. So what do you do? And uh, and then he saw the the sign on the side of the truck that said the Yankee and the Brit signs and T-shirts, and he uh, and he said, "So what do you do?" <laughs> well, right, no help. That's pretty cool. You you guys are getting pretty well known out here. I'm proud to say that we need uh, yeah. we need every everything that uh, everything that supports the trucking industry we can get out here. Well, that yeah. that would be us. I love that trucking music. You know, I'm one of them old <laughs> Southern rockers that got me through many nights. Uh, Running across the south down there and way out to West Texas and up through Denver and all that kind of stuff. I love that music. And, uh, you know, I miss driving, but I don't miss the idiots. And, you know, and, and one reason I gave it up, you know, was basically because of the government. Just every time you turn around, there was another rule. And I just you know have an issue with authority it's like i'm a big grown-up boy i'm not going to do anything wrong and just because one screws it up doesn't mean we're all going to do it so leave me alone and uh i just had enough of it so you know 20 years was plenty you know i've i've been through it all i've been through the uh times of driving uh 24 26 30 hours straight because you had you were getting pushed to get there and uh and you could make it work on a log log book and that and that used to happen and it still happens it's not near as bad today but it's not it's they haven't saved that because of regulation. Just people of uh you know, we've got better equipment now, more comfortable equipment. Uh, and I'll just be honest with you, I'm on e logs and I'm in a speed limited truck and I've got my pros and cons about both of those issues. Uh but I'm you know, I'm in an age now, I like to stop and get my rest. But that's me. That's a that's a personal choice. After after eleven hours of driving or so, I'm ready to stop and, and uh take you know, take some time off. Uh, yeah. When I was younger, it, it was nothing for me to be able to drive, you know, 16, 18 hours and uh, just no problem at all. It was uh, it was not an issue and do it safe. Yeah, well, I was going to say. I was always the type, if I got sleepy, I'd pull over and sleep. You know, I'm not I'm not going to sit out here and uh, risk the public and risk myself because the, the last thing any driver wants is to have, a, have an accident of any kind. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You sound like, you know, like me in a sense. You're sensible enough to know when you're tired, pull over and take a break. The load will still be on the back of your truck when you wake up and uh, if it don't get there on time well at least you're still alive and the hell with the rest of it yeah because uh you know the bottom line is scheduling issues they're just not my problem uh if they don't give me enough time to make a run it's not my fault they you know there's load planners handle all that 
And uh, the the company I work for, though, they uh, you know, uh, thank God I I do work for a very good company. If if uh, even if it means load being late, which they don't like, if I call them up and I'm only two hours into my shift and I tell them, guys, I'm sick or I'm just too sleepy to drive, they'll tell me get it off the road. Just get it off the road. We'll handle the other end of it. Yeah, those are the kind of people yeah. to work for. Yeah, yeah, and there's and the problem is there's not a whole lot of them out there that will do that uh, due to the lawsuits over the truck wrecks and stuff and uh, the coercion lawsuits. It's it's becoming more common. Uh, my company's been kind of at the forefront of of uh, pioneering that. You know, it's like if it's if it starts getting snowy or icy up here in Wyoming where I'm at. Uh, matter of fact, when that bad pileup happened, uh, the second bad pileup here in Wyoming on I-80, right by where I'm at now. Yeah. This past winter, I had just shut down 40 minutes prior to that happening because of the weather. I decided I wasn't going to drive on it, and then all them trucks piled up. Well, I'd been right up there with them. And, uh, you know, I, I called my company. I said, look, guys, I don't want to drive on this. I'm under hazardous load. And, uh, and these tanks, of course, they're way less forgiving than than anything is when you're driving. I mean, you, you lose control of one of these. You've got a load back there moving back and forth, moving you different directions. So I'm just, I'm not going to drive on it. Yeah, that load uh, is going to take you where it wants to go, not where you want it to go. Yeah. And if I, you know, I had to chain up, uh, I had to chain up one time here a couple of years ago, uh, to get over a pass, but it's because a freak ice storm just come in and hit us, and I had to get off the top of that pass and, and get down to safety, which was only about four miles on up the road. But uh, I got up there and got parked. I mean, it's just there's too much risk to the public, too much risk to me and my company. And the bottom line is, I've you know, I've got a beautiful wife and, uh, and grandkids I want to get home to. And, uh, and that's just it's just that simple. No sense in being foolish with it. If you're rolling, it's not going to get there on time anyway. So you got some stories about Joplin? <laughs> These guys in the chat oh, room man. asking. Oh, man. Where could I start on Joplin? <laughs> Somebody <laughs> asked about uh, that. They, Us Brits they don't would, care uh, what you talk about, really. You could recite the phone book and we'll all be drooling. But for the Americans, you know, they all they're all used to your kind of accent. But so yeah, tell us about Joplin. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what. That is the neatest. I've got to say that is probably as far as just going and doing something. That uh, guilty by association truck show was probably the most fun thing that I have done in probably the past twenty years. Wow, what did and you get up uh, to? Uh, uh, just all the all the drivers. All the drivers up there and stuff, there's just a great deal of camaraderie up there. You know, everybody everybody you meet wants to shake your hand, talk to you. And, of course, all the, uh, you know, everybody with a, a truck entry, they want to, you know, they're proud of their of their wagons. They want to show them off. You know, they want to tell you every detail about them. And some of the stuff these guys have done with their trucks, it's, uh, I don't even know how to say it other than incredible. I mean, just incredible amounts of imagination and work that went into these trucks. And, it, and uh... <clears throat> You know, if our government would send people to one of those truck shows and look at those trucks, you want to talk about them doing, I ain't trying to get back on the regulation, but uh, if they would see how proud these drivers are of what we do, they would understand all of us a lot better. I mean, these guys, these are guys that go home on their off-duty time and they're out there polishing chrome on their truck. And they're, you know, they're in there cleaning glass, putting little add-on uh, devices on their trucks, little safety devices. And uh, I've seen some of the most neat, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, uh, just different effects put on trucks up there. It's probably, that I've, I've just never imagined. It's probably pretty safe to say, you think, that uh, a lot of those guys that put that much money and time into their trucks, they're just as good a driver as they are about how they take care of the rig? Oh, I'll guarantee you, you can tell, you can tell. Uh, a lot about a driver by looking at their truck. I, I've always said that, you know, and uh, and you know we we do have some rag bag drivers out here. I mean, everybody's got a face that any driver out here knows that. But you look at a driver that keeps his truck all polished up, keeps it clean inside and out, takes pride in it. He's he's going to take pride in keeping his paperwork correct and uh, and doing what he can do to stay within the law and and do it right. You know, that's the kind of people we need out here. That's that's what we need. We need to be putting a positive image out there to the public. That's what they need to see out of us more exactly. than ever. Exactly. I couldn't agree more with that. So did you perform at the uh, Joplin Guilty by Association? I, I, did, I did not. I went up there. Uh, my buddy Tony Justice was playing up there. And uh, that, the uh, truck show was actually only about 180 miles from where I live. And I had arranged to come home. And I wanted to go up there and uh, spend some time with uh, with Tony and, 
and watch him perform. And uh, just mainly what I done was piled around and visited with everybody up there. And it was kind of nice. Just went around and uh, probably shook a thousand hands. And I can't tell you, I can't begin to tell you the number of pictures that, that uh, Carol Ann and I both took and had taken with people. And uh, met some really great people, seen some people I knew. And uh, oh, what a blast. It was just, uh, man, I, I wish it was still going on. I would be calling into work sick every day until it was over. <laughs> Now that's not a responsible truck driver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't. I never said I was responsible. I'm safe. I'm safe, but I don't claim to be responsible. <laughs> Now that that was a really uh, really well organized event uh, for ever, and it was designed for anybody from uh, two years old to 102 years old. I mean, there was something there for everybody. Where was it? Was it uh, at a fuel stop? They uh, well, the the main body of it was down there at, uh, down by the Flying J and Petro. There, uh, they they moved the uh, uh, Tony's performance was down in town, down at Seventh and Main Street. But they had all the trucks down there, of course, at the, at the truck stops and at the uh, four states trucks, Chrome Shop Mafia offices down there. Is that where Tony yeah. Tony had his truck set up in the middle of the street? Uh, he had it. Uh, well, he had it on display down there. Actually, uh, Everhart Company he works for. Uh, I think they had five trucks down there, and all of them absolutely immaculate. I mean, these trucks you could have you could have eat scrambled eggs off the floor of any one of them. I mean, they're like brand new. And, uh, and the the people that own that company, they that's how they keep their equipment. That's that's how they keep their drivers. They want their drivers to be that way. And uh, and all them boys take pride in their rigs. You know, there there's some of them that's uh, company drivers, and they spend they spend time working on their trucks constantly, uh, making sure everything's right. What do you know? Absolutely magnificent trucks. What do you know about the tribute truck? Oh man, I, I just uh, I was just on the phone uh, a while ago with Thomas. And uh, we're actually working on a little project. I don't know. I should have asked him before I went on here about talking about it. But there's a there's a song I wrote. And, uh, we're wanting to we're wanting to use uh, his truck and and uh, some video of it and do some uh, do some tributes for our veterans uh, with this song in his truck. So that that's a uh, man. That truck is a mind blower to see it in person. Yeah, to walk like around to see a it and, and read everything on it. It's it's a mind blower. It's uh it's it can't be pictures cannot tell you about that truck. You have to see it in person. Any idea who did the truck work? Who did the artwork and everything on it? I actually do not. I actually think uh, Thomas and I have talked about it some today. I think actually he designed uh, that skin on it. And uh, if I'm telling you wrong, it's not intentional. Uh, he had said something that, that uh, led me to think that. But, uh, but if you go around that truck in a circle, it goes through uh, progressively from uh, from the foundation of the United States all the way around to the present day. Uh, you know, through all of our wars and everything. And it's uh, I- I'll tell you something: if you go around it and you look at everything on it, and you don't walk away with tears in your eyes and you have no heart, it's a magnificent, magnificent uh, piece of equipment. It's just uh, it ought to be. They ought to just take it and park it up on a lot of the Smithsonian and leave it there. Wow, Thomas is listening in. Uh, he said you, it's all right to talk about it if you want to. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad he said I don't have uh, I don't have internet right here where I'm at, so I can't see uh, what's going on in chat on my computer. Yeah, Billy, Billy, and uh, Thomas are in the chat. They were asking uh, where you were earlier. What's his name again? Cornholio says you'll be on his show. What's the plans for his show on Thursday? Uh, you know I hate to say, but I don't know. <laughs> I do not know right now. I've got so much stuff going on and so many times and dates bouncing around in my head, and I never write anything down. Well, when it comes That's to- coming from a songwriter, I never write anything down. I've got it all on my voice note. When, <laughs> when it comes to Kevin, you never know what to expect. <laughs> well, I, I'll just I'll just get a hold of him whenever. That'll probably be all right with him. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good man yeah. right there, that's for sure. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to handle Kevin. I, I don't know, I haven't talked to him today. He was going to try to do, uh, do a little barbecue last night, but I think the, the 14 inches of rain made him decide against the barbecue. A barbecue? So, Boy, that I makes me think of Party Row at the old Petro. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, he makes so much money he can afford to actually barbecue meat on the grill. See, real truck drivers like me can't do that. <laughs> We're out here working. <laughs> and, uh... We don't have time or money to do such things. Yeah, I know all about that. Party Row over there at West Memphis one time years ago. Oh. Good Lord. Somebody come in with a reefer full of mixed meat hanging in there, and boy, we had a barbecue. I can't even begin to tell you. Boy, I'll tell you what, that's great when that happens. There's nothing funner 
than a bunch of drivers getting together and something like that happening spontaneously, absolutely unplanned. It's That's just, just uh, what it was, too. Had a couple bed buggers come in, and they pulled a couple couches and some chairs out of the back of the truck, and good Lord, all kinds of things went on out there that night. Them, them were some special times. I mean, I've uh, there's been times I've pulled into truck shop, truck stop and uh, have one or two people recognize me from some of my videos, and next thing you know, we got the guitar out, and there'll be 30 people out there. And, uh, everybody having a good old time. And, of course, the bad thing about it is most of the times at the truck stop, everybody's there for 10 hours. You know, they're in there getting their break, and they got to roll. So sometime during that, you know, everybody can stay for just a little while, and they got to go. Well, if you're the one playing the guitar, you're the one that don't get to go get any sleep, you know. <laughs> That's right. So, that must be why so I remember I, it so well, because it was such a good time. I'll never forget it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I've, I've had some of them. And uh, and we, we need to get that back, Randy. I mean, we all these drivers out here, uh, you know, we can't agree on the kind of truck to drive or what engine, what gear ratio we want to set up. But, but one thing we can all agree on, your professional drivers out here, they all love to drive. I mean, uh, I love my job as bad as I hate it. From some of my songs, you'd think I was just a lonely, sad sack out here, and I hate it. But it's not. It is. It's uh I, it's one of my songs says uh, we're all a bunch of loners that ain't worth the damn of being alone, and that's uh, to me that's a very true statement. I mean, we're you know that's just the way we are. Oh, uh, I can I, understand. I don't, I don't know about you, but I couldn't go take a factory job right now and uh, clock in in the morning, stand there snapping parts together or apart for eight hours. I just couldn't do it. Oh no, that's what got me into driving. I you know when I was young, I started out in the factories because when you're young, it's easy to get into those places. And uh, in the springtime, I'd get right out of there and go back to work for myself. And then when I was able to drive, I went to driving and never looked back after that. Yeah. You know, if my wife were to tell me, you know, Bill, I'm tired of you being gone. Uh, I want you to come home. I'll be, I'll be giving my company notice, and I'll be home. You know, you know, we'll do whatever. But uh, I love this. It's in my blood. It's been in my blood all my life. I had a had an uncle of mine that uh, was a truck driver, and I've, I saw him as a hero as a child. Actually, two uncles, and uh, you know, I, I just I don't know this. Uh, this trucking got in my blood early on. I, de- I even like truck driving music early on. I mean, it's like I've been there and lived that before. Yeah, it's uh, it's just a special special thing. I mean, you either you're either, you're either into it or you're not into it. I mean, Kevin said to ask you about the song you're writing for Truck and Roundup. Well, I've got a I've got a pretty good one going, and I'm not I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag on it. But uh, he's going to like it. I've got one called That's Trucking. It's uh, I can't tell you about it because I give the song away, and I really want to surprise everybody with this. And it's going to be kind of a kind of a funny song. It's going to be a driver putting it back on the company and the DOT. I'll tell you that much about it. I can relate to that. Every time I'd come back, this yeah. one dr- guy I drove for, he was probably the best man I ever drove for. I wish I'd have stayed with him, but he's passed away years ago. But every time I'd come back with a complaint about something, first thing out of his mouth was, that's trucking. Oh, that's that's the common saying, and that's what this song's based on. Oh, don't be good then. Uh, I, I'll go ahead and ruin the ending of this, and the driver's going to leave the truck on the side of the road and call dispatch. When they tell him he can't do that, it's going to be, well, that's trucking. <laughs> Which we all know you can't do that. They'll back tax screen you and you'll be screwed on getting a job the rest of your life. But yeah, heaven it's forbid. a fun thought anyways. Yeah, but you used to get away with that. Oh, there's uh, I'd like to have a dollar for every truck that's been abandoned on the side of the road, especially out here in Wyoming on Interstate 80. So want to park it and hop in somebody else's truck and take off. That place is like a junkyard. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, you should have seen it up here last year. Uh, I was telling you about that wreck I barely missed because I yeah. had a sense to stop for the weather. Man, I come through the next day. And uh, they were still out there cutting steel apart. His a uh, uh, flammable tanker had burned in that. Well, it welded a bunch of steel together. A bunch of trucks had got tangled up. And uh, I think there was only one person killed in that. It, uh, I don't think it was the truck driver. But uh, but those trucks, th- those flames got so hot. I mean, it literally welded that steel together where they had to go in there with torches and cut that twisted steel out and wow. that welded steel out. And uh, you look, you could look out in the median of the road and see them out there cutting. And then, and then I realized what they were cutting apart. I mean, you couldn't even tell it was trucks. Wow. Until you, you got the shapes, you know, and that moment of realization hits you and you say, oh man, that's a, you know, that's a freight liner sitting there that burned or that's an international truck or a Peterbilt to sit there and burn. Yeah, now see, these yeah. are the stories you don't get to hear unless you hear it from the horse's mouth because I'd never heard oh, anything yeah. Of the such, you know that it was that bad. Yeah, it was. It was a. Uh, it was awful. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it was an awful wreck. That was a. Uh, that was a uh, result of a lot of people making a bad mistake, and a result of them not getting the interstate shut down soon enough. And I'm not. I'm not blaming the uh, 
I'm not blaming law enforcement or the authorities to talk with that. You know, there's a point where common sense has to come into play. Well, like you said, you had enough sense to get off the road, you know, and just stay away from it. And, you know, you trust your gut for one thing. You know, your gut feeling a lot of times is usually right. Yeah, yeah, I'll guarantee you, if that, if that hair on the back of your neck standing up, there's a reason for it. Oh, yeah. Every time. Yeah, I, uh, I get a kick out of talking to you and uh, a lot of the other drivers and some of the singers that drive that have been on the show. And uh, it's just, uh, yeah, I'd love to go back to driving, but I just I'm just don't work out well with authority. Well, if you've got that hazmat endorsement, I'll, I'll uh, you can get a hold of me. I'll get you on, and I'll get me a sign-on bonus whenever you sign on with us, and uh, we'll try it out. We'll do some running across Wyoming together. That'd be the last thing I'd do. <laughs> I'll tell you, this uh, this uh, it's a big old state. Whenever you're driving across at sixty-five miles an hour, you know, hey, we got business I make jokes over all you. the time about bugs hitting my windshield and telling me to get the hell out of their way. <laughs> I'm going so slow. <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> oh man! So what's next on the list? You headed? To the, what do you got planned for the future? Anything exciting? Well, uh, uh, we're we're working on the CD right now, and uh, I don't even have really a projected depletion date for it. I've, every time I've thrown a number out there, it's uh, backfired on me. So uh, we're working on it. As I can work on it, and uh, of course, going to be out at uh, Matt's in March and uh, go out there and, and uh, shake some hands and visit some people. Hopefully I'll have a CD to, that I can hand out to some people out there. What yes. exactly, what's on the CD? Is it all your own uh, your own written music? Yeah, it's going to be 100%, 100% uh, originals, yeah. Great. That's and I might, I might uh, change my mind before then and put one uh, one cover song on there, but I don't, I'm not particularly fond of doing cover songs because if it's a, if it's a cover that I like, uh, all I feel I can do is copy. You know, if it's a Merle Haggard song, well, it's, Merle Haggard sounds so damn good to me or Waylon Jennings. I can't do anything to change that song and improve it any. So uh, I'm not I'm not big on doing covers myself. And a lot of guys can pull it off, and, and uh, I'm just not one of them. So when I've I've kind of got a unique, different style. I'm somewhere between the country and the blues, and somewhore between Marshall Tucker and Leonard Skinner with most of my stuff. And, um, I just I've got to kind of write my own stuff to fit my own genre of music. Well, that's some good stuff right there too. You're running right up there with the big dog. Oh, I, I love that stuff, man. That's uh, some of the best artists in the world. I mean, Marshall Tucker, the Almond Brothers, Skinner. You can't. I mean. How can you top that? Well, that's what I was talking about earlier, about uh, running across the South, listening to all that Southern rock. That's just the kind of thing that uh, made me like to run with a hammer down, running through the backwoods of Mississippi and having a good time. Oh, yeah. Have you guys uh, had a chance to see the the show called Muscle Shows yet? No. Muscle Shows. Yep. M- muscle Shoals. Muscle, what? I'll yeah. explain it later. It's, a, it's about Muscle Shoals, Alabama, where Southern rock started. Can you say that slower? M-U-S... C L E like <laughs> like a muscle on okay. your arm. Shoals. S H O A L S. Shoals. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what's, a, what's a shoal? And it, okay, you guys are gonna have to translate. What's a shoal? <laughs> a shoal. A shoals is a is a shallow, rough spot in water. There'll be some rocks sticking up in water, and shallow water runs over. It's a real rough spot. I'll show you oh, some pictures. Oh, shallows. Shoals. Shoals. Well, you oh, might call wait. them shallows over here. Here you you're talking about accents, and you're here you go. You can't even understand me saying shallow. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, I feel for you. If you ever need somebody to talk to in the middle of the night, you got my number. You call me up. <laughs> you might funny. be getting a call here right after the show. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that that show is about the muscle show sound and how it came about. And uh, a lot of your great, uh, uh, your uh, a lot of your black uh, mid level blues artists from the South come out of there, Wilson Pickett, a lot of the greats, and uh, Dwayne Allman, that's kind of where he uh, perfected his skill at with the slide guitar, and uh, that show goes all through that, and I'll tell you, that's the best money you'll ever spend in your life is buying that DVD and watching that show. I'll, I'll bet you'll watch it ten times if you watch it once. Yeah, I'll have to find that. That I'm sounds lost. very interesting. <laughs> I'm just lost. It's, it's, on, uh, it's on Netflix. Girl Ann and I watched it on Netflix, and I'm going to buy the DVD at some point, because I'll watch that thing over and over and I gained something different uh, 
musically from it every time I watch it. There's just so many great musicians that have come out of there. And of course, that's where Skinner cut their first cuts at. Yeah, you talk uh, about some just, rock and rollers. Uh, you, from that, you talk about some rock and rollers from in the South, boy. I don't know anybody. Old Skinner and Van Zant and those guys, they really know how to dish it out. Oh, man, they can throw it out. And, there, and there's a story on that muscle shows. Uh, Greg Almond's on there talking about his, about Dwayne, you know, his brother. Uh, of course, he's long dead now. But uh, he said uh, he had talked. He had talked uh, Dwayne Allman into going horseback riding with him. Dwayne had never ridden horses, and uh, they had to go up a hill onto a paved piece of road. And he told Dwayne not to uh, not to let that horse slip because he'd fall down when he hit that paper that's going up a steep bank and the, then the horse stumbled and he fell and broke his left arm well the guitar picker which Dwayne was an incredible guitar picker that's your worst nightmare is breaking that left arm and that hand you know absolutely and uh and he anyways he shattered it and it's all casted up but he wouldn't talk to Greg Allman his own brother he was so mad at him about helping him get his arm broke he wouldn't talk to him for several weeks and one day, uh, Greg took a, a, a record, and I can't call the name of the uh, blues record he took over there, and a bottle of Chorus I don't know if you guys remember the old Chorus pills. Oh, yeah. That were in a little glass bottle. But he took them over there and left them on Dwayne's porch, knocked on his door, and got his car and left. He said about three hours later, Dwayne called him up, and he said, Baby brother, you got to come over here and hear this. And said he went over there, and he had soaked the label off that Chorus bottle and was playing that guitar with that slide with a cast on his arm. How many of those pills did he take? tell that story. Now, I, he probably took that whole damn bottle of course eating before he done that. But, yeah, I'm thinking. He was playing the fire out of the slide guitar, and that's what he got into. I mean, and that's, that wound up being the, the, his biggest claim to fame. It's, it's, it's a crazy story, but it's uh, told by his own brother. I mean, it's just the truth. Yeah, that's pretty wild. I got lost at Shoals. <laughs> <laughs> I was like thinking, what's I got to do with the horse? Did the horse break its shoulder? Donna's still trying to pronounce the word shoals. <laughs> well, she, we're we're having trouble with her over that. Maybe you just need to get her off the show and straighten her out, Randy. <laughs> and me and you'll talk. Tell, tell her to go back there and perfect her hillbilly accent a little bit. More. <laughs> I think I need to. Yeah, you're 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 way eastern hillbilly. <laughs> I can't wait to hear the trucking roundup show. There's going to be you talking, Kevin talking, Brad, Cheryl. I mean, Cheryl talks strange. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine her bunch. her British with a Jersey accent? A Jersey accent. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If we if we had one if we had one true Jersey in in here and one uh, one person from the Bronx, New York, oh, we could no. have a field day just arguing about accents. Are you kidding me? That'd be fantastic. I, I can get up there in that part of the country, and I have had people offer to buy me a cup of coffee just to talk to them so they can hear me talk. We'll be glad you're and not. I'll say something. They'll say, "Say that again, so we can hear you say it again." You know, it's it's just hilarious to them. Be glad you're not over there in the UK right now. I think Michelle'd have you sitting there about for the next two weeks or so. <laughs> well, <laughs> who knows? I might, I might wind up over there. Hopefully I get this PD out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push that market pretty hard over there. So I've got a lot of I've got a lot of friends in the UK and uh, and in Ireland and uh, Australia as well. She'll say, "Hey, and, uh, Bill, won't you come and sing to me and cook for me?" <laughs> I just keep talking. Yeah. Talk about anything. I can't understand you anyway. <laughs> you better pay. if I got green dollars, I'll do it. Don't think I won't. <laughs> yeah. There you go, uh, Michelle. Yeah. Okay. But those those fucking cash talks, everything else swaps. So. <laughs> But yeah, I, I love people from everywhere. I've been, uh, I spent a little time in Europe in the army, and uh, and uh, I've got a brother that was actually over there for I can't remember six or eight years in Germany, and he's been everywhere over there. And uh, it, it's it's neat seeing different cultures, people, and uh, especially driving these trucks all over the United States. It's amazing the different varying cultures we've got right here in our own country. And, and if you don't get out and all over, you don't you don't really realize how many different cultures we have right here. That's funny you say that because I've tried to explain that to donna because you know as over the years as we've talked about uh you know different sections of uh britain you know the from wales and from london and all the wales. different areas that uh over here we have the same thing like you have kentucky and tennessee then you have north carolina south carolina most people would think they all have the same southern drawl but actually they're all different and the natural borns from those areas you can tell by their facial structure that they're from different areas i mean it actually is like you said it's amazing that you can go around our own country and see so many different cultures all in a matter of a few days oh yeah oh yeah it's it's incredible and uh you know it's uh 
it's funny the people I'll go all over the United States and everybody everybody says let me guess you're from Texas and uh well te- te- you know Texans have an accent but it's uh it's not particularly anything like mine because I got people in Texas that says where in the hell are you from you know where are you from and I'll tell them Ar- Arkansas and they'll explain that well I, I, li- I live in North Arkansas that's where I call home uh-huh. little town believe it or not called flipping f-l-i-p-p-i-n that ain't too close to and, hope uh, is it the word that's not close to hope is it it's uh I'm about if air miles uh, I'm about 130 miles uh it'd be northeast of hope straight if you if you went up from uh, about uh, just just west of uh, Little Rock over at Conway on I-40, uh-huh. if you went straight up, uh, drew a straight line up towards Missouri, I'm right up on the Missouri line. Just wanted to make sure you didn't go to school with Bill Clinton. No, no, don't get me started on that. <laughs> so, I've got a, I've got a lot of friends that are that are Clinton fans, and I'm far from it. But, I'll leave that for Kevin. Uh, yeah, I, I guess we're yeah yeah I think. I think Clinton's a big, uh, uh, or Kevin's a big Clinton fan, yeah, I think so. I think he was telling me that the other day. Uh-oh. Yeah, I better stay out of that one, too. I'll get into a Randy rant. Yeah, he, he, he's a big fan of speed limiters and e-logs, too. Oh, good God. Yeah, he is. He told me that. He won't say that on his show, but he told me that in private. Don't don't repeat that out loud to nobody, though. I wouldn't think of it. We wouldn't that. dream of it. <laughs> 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 what do you oh, think? Oh, man, we'll get on the phone, and we'll be on the phone for two hours talking about this stuff. E-logs, speed limiters, and all this regulation. You hey. get up fired up on that pretty quick. <laughs> Save all that for Thursday. Kevin's hoping you've got something interesting to talk about on Thursday. Yeah, I'm going to come up with something. I think I'm just going to make up some stuff. Yeah. Got a notepad here. I think I'll just make up some stuff. Might be about you. I don't know. You wouldn't do that. I, yeah, oh, yeah, I would. Trust me. You'd, yeah, you'd know <laughs> me a little better. Even like talking about me. Well, I hope we're not stealing all of Kevin's thunder, that's for sure. But, uh, uh, I always say I'm not prejudiced. I, I'll attack everybody evenly. That's right. <laughs> You've been yeah, talking yeah. about me and I wouldn't know about it. I'd be like, it sounds yeah. like the guy from Simpsons. You know that hillbilly of the Simpsons? <laughs> <laughs> you mean Hank Hill? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. I'd be like, hey, just keep talking. <laughs> well, I guess yeah, you're... I'm, uh, I'm honored. Kevin's been playing a lot of my music on his show and stuff, and I'm really honored by that. I'm, I'm honored that, that, uh, that people like it you know my heart goes into anything i write i mean there's a, there's a reason that i wrote it it's not just trying to fit words together there's a reason for it and, uh, and I, I love that well I, I really appreciate that we like your music i think it's fantastic and i guess you guys are going to be talking about jason's law so you should have quite a bit to yak about yeah yeah there'll be a bunch to be a bunch to yak about cause we're you know we're both little southern boys and uh but when it comes to being able to protect and defend yourself we're we're big on it well uh cornholio sounds like he's you know you guys are always talking about how you guys need to get together and do something you know i think cornholio is aiming for you know changing the trucking industry as it is you know so stick with the guy yeah yeah i think i think if a bunch of us uh a bunch of us together i think we can have a, a positive impact on this industry and that's that's the way we need to handle it in positive fashion you know we don't need to be uh negative about it yeah well just yes. need to we need to stick to our guns and uh you know if you've got if you've got a point you believe in stand on it stand stand by it and be proud of it. That's that's what this country was founded on, and uh, and I firmly believe that. I'll never back off that. You know, if, uh, whatever your beliefs are, I'll disagree with you. But up this old saying goes, I'll defend to the death your right to have those beliefs. That's right. And, uh, and that's where we're going to have to be. But but we're going to have to get the people in power to listening to the people out here that know what this job entails. Uh, you know, it's it's not all fun and games out here uh, like they think, and it's uh, we're not wanting to run people down and hurt people. Uh, we want to make a paycheck and get home to our wives that's what we want to do and we want to do it safe well i think uh it's yeah. great that somebody's actually taking it in hand and and uh you know actually going to try to make an impact i think what kevin's doing is great and uh, all the rest of you guys that are uh you know coming on his show and talking about all this and i i hope a lot of these young drivers will pay attention and uh maybe kind of get a grasp that there's more to it than just holding that steering wheel for 10 hours a day there is Oh, I, I, yeah, I wish that's all there was to it. I'd, I'd work three times harder than I do if that's all there was to it. <laughs> I think it irritates you know, me a lot of it does of the fact that nobody, you know, these driving schools, they just, uh, and I know this from experience, <clears throat> I lettered a bunch of trucks for a driving school years ago in Kentucky, and basically it seems to me if you can get the the, uh, the DOT officer around the block and bring him back in one piece that uh, they pretty much give you a license, but, you know, in the class and everything they just don't teach you, you know, they don't teach you other things besides 
how to drive the truck. I mean, anybody can point it forward and go forward, but you know, what about all the road signs, how to read them, how they're all laid out? You know, there's just a hundred well, million things that they should at least touch on, and they just don't seem to even mention uh, any of that. I'll tell you, Randy, I've got, and this is one man's opinion coming from Bill Weaver, and I can be, uh, I can be cursed or, or blessed either one for saying this, but uh, I talked to a uh, fresh brand new school graduate yesterday. Matter of fact, he's got his, uh, he's passed his CDL test and everything. Hasn't even got his actual CDL printed up from his home state yet. I'm not going to mention his name or the company, but they put him through, uh, five days of school, five days. And, uh, and this, this kid, he's a good kid and he's a sharp one. Now he's going to have to go do some actual training before this company will turn him loose on his own. But he has a CDL in hand right now because this is a company that has third party testers. They're a third party tester. They test their own students. And that, when you, uh, when you get a man a CDL in a week, you, you've created a death trap is what you've done. Yeah. You might because just... there, you, you cannot possibly learn enough in these trucks in a week. Uh, off and on all together, I've been out here 28 years off and on in these trucks and I still learn stuff every day. Oh, every absolutely. Day. Absolutely. And uh and you're gonna tell me you can give a man a CDL in one week? No. I don't I don't buy that and uh and it, it's sad. And I'm not I'm not running down all schools because all schools don't do that. We've got one uh, down at Little Rock, Arkansas. It's actually it's a uh I think it's about an eight week school, six or eight weeks. But they actually do a pretty good job. Uh we my company's hired some of their drivers and they and they've made good drivers. But uh yeah one week it's and that five a five day week at that. So uh, you know that's that's one of the problems that our industry is facing right there. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I just uh, you know with guys like that, a few weeks you might as well wrap their shirt around the PTO on a hay baler and turn it on because that's about what you're going to get out of it—a bunch of shredded meat. It, it, exactly. And this uh, this uh, this particular young guy I'm talking about, he's real real safety conscious, and he he'll make a good driver. I have no doubt. But he wants some actual training. I mean, he's he's yearning for that. He don't want to be turned loose. And uh, and this company, and this is a major carrier all over the United States. I mean, you see their trucks on every road in America every day, and this is what they're doing. And that's that's what we're up against because they've got a lot of lobby money, and uh, and that makes it okay. You know, if they can pay off a senator's uh, mortgage or whatever, it, I hate to say that, but it's just uh, a lot of this comes down to people lobbying these politicians. And, uh, you know, a lot of what, what we need to do out here is be supporting organizations like OIDA, which is uh, about the only one supporting independent drivers out here. Yeah. And, uh, and and we need to support one another. You know, no matter what you think, the, the guy passing you's company you need to realize all of us are out here trying to be safe and trying to make a lift. Well, you know, we back need to in the, each other a little bit. You know? Back in the day, too, you know, you used to be able to hop in the truck with somebody, you know, if you were interested enough, and go with them. And they'd, they'd, they'd teach you. They'd let you drive or, or show you how to back up, teach you how to back up. Uh, years ago, you know, when I got my first driving job, I went with his hand lived in kentucky this guy had been driving shit forever and uh he was the kind of guy he slapped me in the back of the head if i didn't do what you know what he told me to do he says you double clutch this damn thing you know and crack me in the back of the skull and he did it until i got it and you know the guy was a drunk when he was at home but i'll tell you what i learned a lot of respect from him and i learned a lot about driving just from him doing it because it, you know it was his passion you bet second nature to him he's just just one of them that he lived a truck yeah i guess i guess you could have called it that's the uh, mindset we all need to have out here you know you need to have home mode and you need to have truck driver mode when you're driving that that uh that texting and texting and driving and facebooking and driving and all this stuff you know you've got i've got 18 gauges on my dash i have to keep track of you know i've got uh, numerous mirrors i have to keep track of a windshield watch in front of me there's too much too much stuff to do to allow yourself to be distracted and uh for a young especially for a young person that don't have that mindset yet, they have to be properly taught, or they're just going to go into it with a bunch of bad habits. I and, did uh, want and I'm to not by any means that. running down young drivers. We need them out here, and I'm proud to see anybody go better theirself by going to a truck driving school. Oh, I could go to a good one if you're going to go to a very good school. Yeah, but that five weeks, you know, five weeks, put them in with somebody that that knows what they're doing. Don't take a trainer that, you know, been driving for a year and put him in with him because that's still not enough. Exactly, exactly. It's just uh, too much can happen too fast out here. What's the deal with Snyder drivers? I'm not from a lorry driving background, so I wouldn't know, but everybody everywhere is always bitching about Snyder drivers. What is the deal with them? Uh, about about what drivers, then? Snyder. 
Oh, Snyder? Yeah. What What is it? Well, with well, they're a, they're a large they're a large they're a very large carrier, and they they go through a lot of help, and they hire a lot of uh, young, inexperienced drivers. They're they're one of the big companies, and uh, I, and I really don't want to I don't want to personally attack them because I do know some good Snyder drivers. I mean, and it, it's like Swift, JB Hunt, all these companies that get a bad rap. Uh, they do have a lot of good drivers, but when you've got twenty thousand drivers working for you, and they hire a lot of I call them AIS drivers, which AIS means ass in seat. <laughs> it means they just needed an ass in a seat. Yeah. That's the problem. These major carriers need help so bad. Anybody whose ass they can stick in a seat, that's who they'll put in the truck. Right. And, uh, gotcha. and, it, and it's, it's a hazard. It's a hazard. It's not only a hazard to you out here in a motor car, it's a hazard to me in this truck. I'm pulling hazardous chemicals. I need I need not only to know what I'm doing, I need the guy passing me to know what he's doing too. And, uh, and that's the way everybody needs to look at this and be on the same page with it. But, uh, but yeah, every uh, we all joke about Snyder drivers. It's, it's no joke. And uh, Swift drivers. And uh, I've, I know some Swift drivers and Snyder drivers both that are. So I'd recommend them in a minute to come to work hauling has chemicals. I mean, great guys and uh, very, very adept drivers. But but they've got a lot of them that are AIS drivers, too. What uh, What do you do for fun? Fish and play music. How often do you get to go home? Uh, I usually stay out anywhere from about two and a half to three weeks. Uh, this trip here, I'll be out. I'm figuring on going home uh, probably next weekend. That'll put me out two weeks. Oh, that's not bad. And, uh, yeah, I can, I can handle that. It's uh, my, my company. They like you to be out about ten days and go home for a couple. But I like to be out about three weeks and go home for four or five. Yeah, there you go. Are you you running a dedicated route? No, no. I, I run all over the all over the United States. Uh, Thank God, most of the time I've got a great dispatcher that keeps me running good hollow lanes like this I-80 quarter out here. I call them hollow lanes. They're a little bit less traffic than uh, than running these major cities and stuff. So uh, I hear that. So uh, I'm not up in New Jersey and New York and stuff a lot anymore. And, uh, I just uh, I get unnerved up there. You know, you got four different flammable chemicals on one trailer, and uh, you know if you're pulling a compartment trailer, you got one like I've got that's got one one on it, and uh, it's scary. You get around all them people shooting around cutting you off i can't even imagine Get out here on the interstate 80 you're more likely to see an elk than you are to see another car i can't imagine what the east coast must be like anymore oh it's crazy it's crazy just to bust into an ant colony and look at it and picture you being one of the ants and that's that's what you've got yeah well Ugh. well i don't want to steal all kevin's thunder for thursday so but we do what we do we do have a little request what are you going to sing for as quick before you go oh man i, I wasn't even to... expecting that hey i love to put people <laughs> on the spot I, I hope i uh i don't know if a song will come through this phone without blaring you out or not <laughs> i'll have to put you on speaker a speaker instead of this earpiece why don't you sing along yeah. with us to happy birthday for thomas <laughs> I'll, uh, I'm going to try to have Kevin's song done Thursday yes. for him. I don't know. Hey, uh, it I'm is... working on it. He's got, he's got one that he's writing on, too, and he's all proud of it and stuff. He told me the other day, he said, I'm not going to tell you about it yet. And then he, about 10 minutes into the conversation, he said, well, I'll tell you a little bit of it. And about five more minutes, he said, well, I'll tell you a little bit more of it. Uh, I figure by Thursday, I'll have the whole song he's writing. <laughs> I might, well, they, I might try to steal it from him. If it's good, and I'll try to steal it from him. Maybe put it on the CD. Who knows? <laughs> it's, Th- it's Thomas's birthday. Sing him happy birthday. And Michelle wants you to sing as well. She says, oh, sing dirty well, to me, she said. Well, let me, uh, <laughs> well, I'm trying to think of one of my own songs to sing. Ain't that awful? <laughs> Yeah, I was just thinking that. I copyrighted 47 songs the other day and cannot think of one song. <laughs> you see. Well, can you sing us a little hint of the song that you're writing, that you're learning right now? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, uh, I'll sing you a little bit of uh, one I wrote, one of my favorite ones I wrote called We Drive On. Yay! Uh, and I hope this don't blur you out because I've got you on speaker. And if you <laughs> say something to me that I'm blowing you out at, I'm probably not going to hear you, so... You just uh, go ahead. It's, it's got a little bit of Randy Southern Roth flavor to it, a little Marshall Tucker sound to it. All right. Well, it's a driver's make the world go around by driving around the world. Or I ain't high and steady hands upon the wheel. A fresh pour cup of coffee and some all night radio. Watching the world go by, never showing what we feel. But we drive. 
Oh. Never knowing where we're going next or when we'll make it home. Yes, we drive. Oh. We're all a bunch of loners. It ain't worth a damn that being alone. Something like that. Hey. That's beautiful. Thank you. I don't know if y'all could hear that good or not. Yeah, it was great. Sounded fantastic. That's uh, that's one of them that'll be on the CD. Wow. Well, I can't wait to hear we, the whole uh, song. We we rocked it up a little bit uh, on the studio cut of it, but uh, it's got some pretty good guitar in it. Mm-hmm. I got a, a couple of really good lead guitars that uh, actually the first time I played that, just like I just played it for y'all for them, and they turned around and just blew my mind with them guitars. Cause I just told them I wanted somewhere between Marshall Tucker and Leonard Skinner, and man, here they come with it, and it's like, oh, yeah. we got to get this down. I mean, it was just incredible what they done. Oh, that's beautiful. I'd like to hear the whole thing. Maybe when you get those CDs done, you could send a couple this way and we could give them out? I'll, I'll, bet, I'll bet we can uh, sweep you a couple of copies up there. Yeah, that'd okay. be great. I bet that ain't no problem at all. So. Well, I think your song come out nice and clear. These guys in the chat room loved it, and it sounded great from our side. So thank you so well, much uh, for that. It's amazing. I appreciate it. I appreciate every one of them. appreciate what they do. So we're all out here trying to do the same thing. Yes. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and let you go then and get on with your trucking, and uh, we'll get on with doing some more of that great country. All right, guys, man, I appreciate y'all, and uh, appreciate your support, and, and y'all be safe, and uh, keep uh, keep on keeping on. All right, man, thank you very much. Be safe. All right, All right. thank you, guys. Bye.